The Link Studio S1 from manufacturer Link Plus Technology is a Windows 11 Pro tablet designed for creative drawing and note taking on the go. It's powerful, responsive, and dare I say, an actual contender to the Microsoft Surface Pro. It achieves where it matters, and despite Windows 11's best efforts to make me hate it, I actually found myself really enjoying this tablet. Keep watching to find out why as we go in depth with the Link Studio S1. I'm James Bruce, you're watching windowsreport.com reviews. The Link Studio S1 has a recommended retail price of $2,000, but it's currently on sale at $1,000, and if you can pick it up at that price quickly, I think it's a bargain. Twice that much at $2,000? Uh, I might think again. Link Plus are pitching it as your ultimate artistic companion, and I think that's a fair assessment. Let's start with the out-of-the-box experience. Make sure you're plugged in, then turn on for the first time. Sign into your Microsoft account and be prepared to bat down the avalanche of privacy settings, decline Office 365, say no to OneDrive and nope right out of Game Pass. Does anyone else remember when the EU made Microsoft give you a choice of browsers? And yet somehow all of this upsell is okay now in Windows 11. Maybe someone should take a look at that. Naturally, once I battled my way through all of that, the first thing I did was to boot up trusty old Edge browser and promptly type in download Chrome. Onto the design and components then. The Link Studio S1 measures about one centimeter thick uh, and features a fairly chunky bezel around the main 13 inch touchscreen area, part of which is dedicated to some very handy uh, hardware buttons, six plus one scroll bar on both the left and the right. So these 12 keys and two scroll bars can be mapped easily on a per application basis to any function or key press. They are really handy. It weighs 1.1 kilograms uh, or 2.43 pounds, so it's easily in the category of portable, along with a battery that should last around four to five hours during average use. The matte screen is rated for 100% of the sRGB color gamut and features a superb viewing angle. Not sure if you can see that on video. So on the back, you'll find this very strong, sturdy metal stand with a whopping 152 degree angle of adjustment. So you can lay it sort of almost flat. Ports are limited with two USB-C, one of which will be used for charging, of course, and one USB 3.0. There's also a micro SD card slot uh, on the rear here, uh, next to the SSD housing, so you can expand a little storage if needed. The keyboard connects via magnets and pogo pins, pretty, pretty easily, I say, when you align it. Uh, on the base, of course, so you probably don't need many USB ports except for the odd USB stick, and that works fine. Now, internally, you'll find an Intel Core i7, 11th gen, quad-core CPU, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM, 512 gigabytes SSD, and an Intel Iris Xe GPU, which drives this gorgeous screen at a native 2160 by 1440 or 2K resolution. It's a matte screen with a Wacom EMR drawing layer. The bundled keyboard is a slimline magnetic one that folds in onto the screen. Despite being a chiclet style actuator, the keys don't feel as bad as I was expecting them to. They do have a nice click to them, uh, as does the trackpad. However, it doesn't like you leaving one thumb or finger on the clicky part, as I'm sort of accustomed to on a Mac trackpad. I found that would result in multiple touches registering, so you'll need to get used to one finger only operation like it's 1995 again. Overall though, a pleasant enough keyboard experience. However, it did feel like there was a slight bowing on mine. You can, you can almost see it there. It's a little bit bent. Uh, the whole thing is raised up, thanks to this part on the back, and then angled slightly, but that results in a bit of flex that was uh, not ideal for me. So moving on to performance and usability. Generally, the UI feels super snappy, no doubt helped by the 16 gigabyte RAM and fast CPU, and that's, I feel the most important thing with a device like this. So top marks for UI. Link Plus also did a great job with the touch and inking drivers here. Everything works out of the box. The touch keyboard appears when it should, uh, and you can easily swap over to handwriting input if you'd like. I've tried some tablets where the on-screen keyboard and the inking experience was completely buggy. It just ruins the whole experience, but here it is just as you'd expect from something first party even, like the Surface Pro, or even, dare I say, better than that. For performance testing, I ran the free 
3D Mark Steel Nomad Light Benchmark, which is designed for lightweight PCs. It scored actually pretty well at 1193, but that equated to an average 8.84 frames per second, so hardly a graphical powerhouse, uh, as expected with its built-in Intel Iris Xe GPU, but not too shabby either. You can certainly run some older games or less graphically intense ones on this. PC Mark gave a good 4,775 um, of a combined score, excelling in general UI and web browsing performance, but dragged down slightly by the video editing and rendering performance. Again, as expected with the lack of a dedicated GPU. On the leaderboards, that's an entirely average score though. So I'm gonna call that a win, actually, that's pretty good. Meanwhile, Cinebench 2024 gave it a multi-core score of 231, which is on the low end and expected. Single core performance at 2.81 gigahertz was much better, obliterating the AMD Threadrippers and even Intel Xeon, but still bested by low end Apple M1 chips. But with superb single core performance, this is what's really going to give you the feeling of day-to-day -day good performance. In terms of pen experience, here I focused my testing on two main uh, points. First, as a drawing tablet, which is, of course, the primary purpose of this device. And second, as a Windows Ink platform for note-taking, etc. And I was really impressed on both fronts. The pen is included in the box, by the way. It's not one of those optional upgrades that you have to get as is the keyboard. Now, I'm not an artist, just a very experienced tech reviewer, so I can't pretend to know the intricacies of digital painting, but I can say that it is responsive, following strokes without lag. It offers 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity and tilt recognition with the Wacom Shinonome series EMR pen, along with seemingly good palm rejection. By the way, the app that you're seeing, Adobe Fresco, is now completely free to use and has some really fun brushes definitely worth checking out. This pen itself is lightweight and comfortable, but pretty basic. There's no secondary button, but there is an eraser on the end. There's also no way to attach this to the tablet, as far as I can tell. There's no strong magnetic clip or, or folio case with a little part to put it in, so don't lose it. They do include a case for it, along with some spare nib, so you're less likely to lose this uh, from your bag, but yeah. However, plus points for not needing a battery. Now the virtual keyboard or pen input appeared when expected, as I mentioned, and Microsoft OneNote is included and great for quickly jotting down things, supporting pressure and tilt, etc. though of course other apps are available. Handwriting recognition for Windows Ink input was fairly terrible, but in fairness, that's also because my handwriting is fairly terrible, no AI or software algorithm in the world is going to help me there, so I found the virtual keyboard to be sufficient. Okay, let's talk about thermal management and fans. Like all powerful Windows tablet, the Link Studio S1 appears to have an issue with thermal management. Cramming high performance components into such a thin device is never going to work out easy. And in this case, it means occasional bursts of almost jet engine-like fans and a real struggle to dissipate heat effectively even during just basic user interactions. Once you do anything beyond simple web browsing, unzipping a download for instance, the fans will kick in in earnest. When testing out a five-year-old, not particularly graphically intense game of Civ 6, I couldn't actually keep a hold of it because the back got uncomfortably hot. Hardware Monitor reported that the CPU core temps reached 100 degrees Celsius, though obviously the case wasn't that hot, uh, otherwise I would have literally burnt myself. But at 100 degrees, the performance is throttled. I also had numerous problems with sleep mode and ended up having to disable it completely and just use a full shutdown whenever I wasn't using it. Essentially anything beyond sort of 30 minutes of sleep would send it into some sort of hibernation from which it wouldn't wake up. Uh, and that meant having to wait for the battery to completely die over the course of a day and then turning it on from zero power. Now I don't know if that's a common hardware issue with these devices or it was limited to just a problem with mine. Uh, but once I'd narrowed it down, uh, figured out the cause, it was easy to work around. Uh, however, it did delay my review somewhat while I was figuring that out. So should you buy the Link Studio S1? First and foremost, the Link Studio S1 is obviously gunning for the title of Microsoft Surface Pro Alternative. Almost identical hardware, but at a fraction of the cost and the accessories are bundled in. 
but it goes further than the Surface Pro, offering a more reliable pen experience, built-in shortcut keys as well. So it's not just a case of being a good copycat, it's actually a better alternative. Now I'm gonna assume you're looking at the Link Studio S1 as a Windows tablet that lets you take notes, draw, and run full Windows applications because otherwise you would probably be better served by an iPad Pro and Apple Pencil which would both be more performant, quieter running, and more reliable just for grab and go note taking or drawing. The benefit with this being that you can run anything and it's gonna do what you're used to. Now, given the issues that I've had with thermal runaway and sleep mode on this, I would be somewhat hesitant to rely on it for say lecture notes. On top of the occasional burst of fan noise, which could really get annoying in a quiet lecture hall, I think even Microsoft has realized that running full-on powerful desktop processors in this sort of form factor is difficult. So they've been pushing their own ARM-based devices quite heavily. In terms of actual performance, the Link Studio S1 is outstanding as a Windows tablet. No delays on the pen, general UI interactions are superb, frustration-free, and I found overall the touch and the pen experience of Windows is superb. Of course, it's not going to run hardcore 3D games, but casual gaming is fine. The CPU more than makes up for it. And more importantly, your art drawing software is going to run well too. Full marks on the performance front. Are there any other downsides? The keyboard takes some getting used to and feels far too flimsy. I can't get myself to really type on it. So it's only really there for cases when uh, the pen or virtual keyboard just wasn't enough. Mostly though, I'm impressed with a few little frustration points. This isn't gonna be your desktop replacement. Uh, I don't think it would suffice me as my one and only computer, but it is a great drawing tablet. The Link Studio S1 is available now from Link Plus. Please hit like if you want more, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, and subscribe for more tips and tricks from the rest of windowsreport.com crew. Until next time.